Well, welcome to Bees with Rich. Thank God it's Friday. I'm Rich, editor of Under the Radar Report. Well, let's let's crack open this week's beer. As you can see, it's got an interesting Anglo-French feel to it. Almost dropped it. Inner Vision 3 by Wolf of the Willows from Maud Maudelock in southern Victoria. Let's see how hard it is. Because that's what we're talking about today. Hard assets. Hard! Mmm. <coughs> Wolf of the Willows. Yeah. Hasn't got much of a bite to it. Might grow on me. Like inflation. Inflation is one of the fears we've been talking about for a while now. And it seems to be coming off a bit, so certainly the fears in any in any event. But what's not coming off is takeover activity. Inventors, investors, everyone is hunting for hard assets. So get ready to find out how you can profit. Anyway, this week, six stocks in our universe are involved in takeover activity, which I'll come to. But what do I mean by hard assets? Let's drill down a bit. Well, these could include investment properties whose rents are climbing, climbing at faster than inflation rates. And that's that's the key, that's the crux. So what I mean by hard assets is real returns. Real returns in in um, you know economics parlance is in terms of returns above inflation. So it's no accident that big investors of this world are chasing are chasing these hard assets. I mean, last week I talked about BHP's bid for Oz Minerals. But I think, you know, obviously investment properties are also hard assets and they're across the spectrum. Why in equities are interesting is because they provide you with assets that you otherwise couldn't get access to. And this provides a crucial component in the future to maintaining your standard of living. So that's what you're looking for from above average returns is to maintain that standard of living into the future. You might own your own house. Um, you know, that's a big asset. You've got an asset in terms of your income producing potential, your own IP. But what equities provide you with is that crucial kicker that you really need, you know, to maintain the standard of living that you used to. So, you know, what we're talking at the smaller end is also not only that, but takeover activity. Why? Because there's so many more of them. There's so many more small companies, and because they're B, and also because they're in bite sized chunks. So the corporates, the private equity people of this world, they can take them over. You know, it takes a lot more resources, a lot more energy, a lot of everything to take over a big company. I mean, I remember back to you know, Rio Tinto trying to take over Alcan and almost broke the company. It would have broken the company, but for emergency equity raisings. So that's what's happening in the small cap world. They're being hunted like something out of the corporate Hunger Games. That maybe scares the living downlights out of me. But thank God in the corporate world, you know, you can profit from it. Let's go through some of the companies we're profiting from and why those hard assets are there. So the first cab off the ranks is Tassel, which you'll all be familiar with, the um, salmon farmer from Tasmania. I mean, these are real assets. Why? Because they're restricted. Like the Tasmanian government said there's no new fishing licenses down there. So they're being ring-fenced. On top of that, Tassel's poured $350 million dollars in the past few years into upgrading their hatcheries and and building a prawn business so they've they've really built these assets up and um that's why you know the canadian aquaculture giant cook has had to raise its offer you know something like 15 percent you know to the point at which they you know they could well have done the deal so the next one off the rank is you know in the air literally Alliance Aviation. Well, they've built up an asset base of Fokkers, which are a hardy plane good for traversing the arid conditions of Australia and particularly, you know, where the mines are located in West Australia. So they built up a good FIFO 
business, but they've expanded the business buying new aircraft and brayers. And that has produced a lot of problems for them in terms of teething problems. But Qantas is trying to take them over yeah, because growth is so hard to come by. And you know, for Qantas, it just makes a lot of sense, which you know, it does for most corporates to buy, to buy growth rather than produce it yourself. They're in you know, a bit of a sting in the tail at the moment with the ACCC. But the point is that Alliance Aviation has built up a good asset base, which will hold them in good stead. So we'll just see how this takeover activity goes. But, you know, there could well be a point at which, if it fails, you know, we'll buy Alliance Aviation again because it is a quality company. Then we come to the takeover this uh, offer this week of Nearmap, which is the aerial surveying company. Now, these assets aren't quite as hard as, you know, planes being imaging and um, database and AI and all that stuff. I'm talking IP, but the point is that these assets are hard to replace. So creating them from scratch would take a long time. And I think this is the key point. A lot of these assets in, in the equities world have been built up during periods of really low interest rates where the funding costs are close to, you know, free. They're not quite, they're not free, obviously, but, you know, there is as low as it gets. So right now, with interest rates going up, you know, financial interests are chasing those assets. It's kind of akin to trying to chase a house when, you, when you've just got financial assets at your disposal. It's very hard. So that's why they're chasing so hard. So that's what, that's what we're trying to do is accumulate hard assets in our portfolio. One with hard assets that's had a, some takeover activities, Main Pharma. Well, I've covered Main Pharma for a long time. And they sold one of the reasons that I got into the stock in the first place, uh, the metrics business, which is a contract uh, or a generics manufacturer of um, narcotics. You know, well, that excited me for you know obvious reasons because narcotics are very. There's a lot of regulations around them, and in the U.S., it really was a company builder. You know, they did some company destroying decisions subsequently buying the Teva generic assets. But the point is that they still had this good keystone asset. Like Reckon did another time, they sold a key a key accounting software business. But what you've got is still earnings potential in what's left, and that's the key. So in both cases, we made 50% relatively quickly, but you still have to make a decision what to do with the remaining assets. So we talk about that in this week's report. And then, of course, you know, Gen X Power. The, the company on everyone's lips, though never before. But this is like a renewables um, asset business. Um, and there's been a takeover for these renewable assets by led by um, Atlassian co-founders Scott Farquhar and his investment banker partner, Kim Jackson. So this follows close on the heels of um, Cannon Brooks, Mike Cannon Brooks's bid for AGL and you know he's got a strategic stake there <laughs> but say what you like about these Atlassian co-founders they know a good hard asset here's the going hard well what's coming up this week's issue we've got 12 not one not two not you know I could go on 12 companies that could be taken out so I encourage you to read this week's issue because it didn't two of them are companies that have made good takeovers themselves. So companies in the small cap world can really benefit from takeovers more than they can at the large cap world. Why? Because you get more operating leverage. You're operating off a smaller capital base. So they're actually a lot more exciting. You have to do more research because it's more consequential. But, you know, with good research comes good rewards. You can take that to the bank. We've also got dozens and dozens of companies reporting. So there's loads of companies we'll be following, loads of opportunities. It's really, you know, this is the period where you really need to be reading under the radar report. So I'll be reporting back to you next week. Exciting times under the radar. Cheers.